Prepare yourself for a journey into the 1964 film Roustabout, where you'll find humor, surprises, and touching moments. This movie has it all, from funny scenes to ones that will make you gasp or even shed a tear. It'll keep you interested from beginning to end. Curious about why this movie is still loved by so many? Or maybe you have a favorite character. Share your thoughts with us. We want to hear about your memories and experiences with this classic. Stay tuned for more interesting facts. And don't forget to tell us your stories in the comments. Roustabout, directed by John Rich in 1964, offers a familiar yet engaging experience for fans of Elvis Presley's films. The movie showcases Presley's performance, which stands out as one of his best, portraying a character with depth and complexity. However, the plot follows a predictable and sentimental trajectory, with Barbara Stanwyck's Carney show facing financial troubles and Leif Erikin's character lacking depth. Despite its shortcomings, Stanwyck's presence adds a touch of class to the film, and Joan Freeman delivers a balanced performance as the heroine. The carnival setting provides a vibrant backdrop for the unfolding drama, featuring colorful characters, romantic entanglements, and comedic moments, including Sue Ayn Langdon's portrayal of a flirtatious fortune teller. The musical numbers, including Poison Ivy League and Little Egypt penned by Jerry Labor and Mike Stoller, add to the film's charm, though they may not match Presley's earlier hits. Additionally, eagle-eyed viewers may spot an uncredited raw Kel Welch among the college kids in the opening sequence, hinting at future stardom. Overall, Roustabout offers an entertaining ride for fans of Presley's work, despite its formulaic nature and sentimental plot. It's a showcase of Presley's talent and charisma, set against the backdrop of a lively carnival atmosphere, making it worth a watch for enthusiasts of classic cinema. Opened in eighth place on Variety's list, the 1964 movie Roustabout initially faced a lukewarm reception. Despite its eventual success, director John Rich wasn't initially interested in the project when producer Hal B. Wallis first offered it to him. However, the movie's soundtrack achieved notable acclaim, topping the pop album charts with 11 full tracks. Remarkably, the album, which featured just 20 minutes of music in total, became one of the shortest length albums to achieve such a feat at that time. The brevity of the album didn't detract from its popularity, highlighting the quality of the music and the appeal of the movie's sound. In the development of the movie, Elvis Presley initially recorded a title song written by Otis Blackwell and Winfield Scott. However, producer Hal B. Wallis objected to a line in the song, prompting Elvis to record a different title song penned by Bernie Baum, Bill Giant, and Florence Kay. This change led to the final version of the film. Critics from The Village Voice dubbed the movie as the Citizen Kane of jukebox movies, highlighting its significance within its genre. Barbara Stanwyck, a prominent actress, concluded her theatrical career with her appearance in the film. Following this movie, she exclusively appeared on television until her passing in 1990. In a story about secret talks, Mae West, a well-known actress, turned down a role as an older carnival owner because the studio wouldn't change the script to let her be one of Elvis Presley's love interests. Instead, the part went to Barbara Stanwyck. When Elvis gets on stage to entertain the carnival crowd with the song Hard Knocks, he's supported by his usual partners, the Jordanaires. In the audience at the tea house, you can spot the future star Raquel Welch. Her being there adds an interesting touch to the scene. All these things together make the movie more interesting for fans and give them moments they won't forget. In the making of the film, Elvis's manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played a significant role. He worked closely with the director, Hal Wallis, ensuring that the script reflected the authentic atmosphere of carnival life. Parker insisted on toning down exaggerated language and incorporating genuine carnival business elements into the storyline, emphasizing the wholesome nature of carnival life. Despite initial efforts, Elvis's recorded song, I'm Aroused About, didn't make it to the final film and remained unreleased until its rediscovery in 23. Interestingly, Sue Ann Langdon's character expresses concern about being too mature for Elvis, despite him being only 14 months older. This dynamic adds a layer of irony to their on-screen interactions. In the 1964 movie, the main actor did his own exciting stunts, showing a high level of commitment not often seen. Elvis Presley, who starred in the film, did the stunts himself, which isn't something many actors do. The soundtrack album for Roustabout did really well, reaching the number one spot on the Billboard Albums chart. This is impressive because it happened when everyone was crazy about the Beatles and British music, showing that people still loved Elvis Presley's music a lot. While they were filming, Elvis asked the director if he could do a dangerous flying stunt scene because he knew karate. At first, the director wasn't sure, but he agreed. 
Unfortunately, Elvis got a bad bump on his head, needing stitches. Luckily, the script had a motorcycle accident, so they just put a band-aid on his head, and he kept filming. So, Elvis doing his own stunts, the album's success, and the unexpected accident during filming all make the story of the 1964 movie really interesting. In the movie, he smoothly rides across beautiful landscapes on his Honda 305 Superhawk, a cool Japanese motorbike. This bike adds excitement to his character as he travels freely on American roads. He wears a classic American Scots Perfecto leather jacket, showing rebellion and timeless style. The music album that goes with his adventures was a big hit, reaching number one on the Billboard charts. The music not only adds to the excitement of the movie, but also represents the roustabout's wild charm. As the story unfolds, the Honda 305 Superhawk becomes part of who he is, showing his determination and love for life. The sound of the engine and the wind in his hair make the movie even more thrilling. It's a journey that everyone can relate to, no matter where they're from. In the end, what people remember most about the film is not just the story, but also the cool bike, the leather jacket, and the awesome music. In 1964, a popular movie came out in the US. It showed scenes from a big carnival, kind of like Barbara Stanwyck's Morgan shows. These scenes were inspired by Kraft's 20 big shows, which belonged to Mike Cartel's dad. In the movie, there's a carnival called Carver Shows where Joan Freeman and Elvis Presley hang out at night. This carnival looks a lot like the Pike in Long Beach, California. You can even see the big Cyclone Racer roller coaster in the background. These scenes really brought the carnival world and its characters to life in the story. Joan Freeman and Elvis Presley, born on the same day, seven years apart, brought their distinct energies to the 1964 film. Interestingly, Mae West was initially considered for the role of Maggie Morgan, but turned it down. The casting eventually led to a memorable closing scene, featuring Elvis Presley lifting a child into the arms of the strongman, portrayed by Richard Keel, best known as Jaws from James Bond. This unexpected choice added a unique touch to the film's conclusion, showcasing the synergy between characters. In the world of 1964's Roustabout, the shared birthday of Joan Freeman and Elvis Presley with a seven-year gap marked an intriguing alignment of stars. Mae West, initially approached for the role of Maggie Morgan, declined, paving the way for a different dynamic in the film. The final scene, where Elvis Presley, embodying the character Charlie Rogers, lifts a child into the arms of Richard Keel, the imposing strongman, injected an unexpected charm into the narrative, leaving a lasting impression. 